And good evening, and welcome to Frankly Speaking, where truth is our mission, reality our realm, set as we see it, and frankly as well. I'm Joe Spina and the illustrious Paul Crowley. Welcome to the show. Speaking we'll, of which, we're going to really talk frankly today, aren't we? I'm very looking, frank. Very frank. And frankly, you should allow the people to know how they can join up with us. Yeah, um, you know, as you know, we, we're not live, uh, and as a result, we can't accept uh, call-ins, which is something that we're working to resolve at some point. But in the meantime, we really, we're hoping that we can get comments from you by sending, uh, sending us your comments to our Facebook page. So you go to facebook.com forward slash Frankly speaking, in Lynn, and you can uh, comment. We get we're starting to get a number of comments, uh, positive, sometimes not so positive, but we're getting lately we've been getting pretty good comments. Well, we'll get to those at the yep. last five minutes of the show. Yep, and uh, that's it. So let's get to the saint among us, by the way, and that happens to be my co-host. You're not putting oh, that up. Oh on yeah, screen, we're throwing you? that up there. He is the saint among us. We well, heard of Saint Paul. Wonderful guy. On this rock, I will build my church. <laughs> now, Paul, folks. Hey, is, wait, a, wait a minute, Joe. I got, I got to say. Go ahead. You've got, you've, got, you've got this all wrong. I am no saint. Just, let's just. That's according let's, to you. Let's just be according on, to the, your mother, on you the record. A, I am no saint. Well, <laughs> he's in search of truth, folks. Justice in the American way. That's a fact. Tell me you're not in favor of that. Can I see what he's put up on the screen? This is, this is embarrassing. You can't see it. <laughs> he's thoughtful. He's the voice of reason, he's compassionate, he's caring, truthful, passionate, competent, and honorable. But what fascinates me is your coat of arms, Mr. Crowley. The Crowley coat of arms is a blue boar. It's a wild boar, yeah. Yeah, a wild boar. Yeah. That's, you know, Does it mean anything? Well, I, I, would, I will tell you that um, my colleagues when I, from my city council days mm -hmm. would tell you that uh, I had all the delicate touch of a wild boar. Uh -huh. <laughs> But saintly. Um, um, Peter Capano, his comments regularly were, well, you just can't help yourself, can you, Paul? <laughs> and, That's actually a tribute. Yeah, um, you know, I basically, um, knowing that my statements might be not politically correct, I would Ooh. say them anyway. You know. Before it was fashionable. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Truth is never fashionable in politics. No, it's not. It, I'll give you an example. They're making a big bahua. How do they? What's that word they use? Bruhaha. That's the word, Polly. That's the word I was looking for. Searching. I'm getting a little bit of a. a what do they call we it? Have, shot circuits. I'm getting shot circuits. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. <laughs> so, uh, Who else has been short circuited? I have no idea. Yeah. I'm not getting into that because yeah. people end up like dead to get into yeah. that one. Uh, oh, I know. How we, and I want to talk about that because uh, the news out today was pretty remarkable about that. Um, you know the the. The email, the yeah. 20,000 emails from the DNC didn't come from Vladimir Putin. Apparently it came from a, uh, a DNC analyst who was now dead. He's a corpse. He was murdered. That's right. His name is Rich. They and left the, everything And behind. there's conspiracy theories, theories are abound, um, but it's, it's pretty amazing how um, over the years, um, you know, there's been death in the wake of the Clintons. Well, wow, he's not the only one. There's another three, or three, 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 three in total people connected to the DNC that have died no in the past three us. weeks, and nobody knows why and how. Right. Okay. But right now All we're going to do our urban update. Yep. Urban update, folks. An urban city is. By the way, can I can I just say one one last thing about that whole DNC stuff? And you know, you can call it a conspiracy if you want, and you could tell me that I mm -hmm. need to put on my uh, tinfoil hat and all that kind of stuff. But the problem is. The reason it appears to be a conspiracy theory is because the mainstream media won't talk about it, you know. And you're going to be showing this later. But when anything anything bad about Clinton, very good, Paul. Oh, very good. Anything bad about Clinton? So if you really want to learn more about this stuff, go to the Drudge Report, which is a place where they they don't write stories and opinion. It's it's where they it's where they bring together all the stories that are really necessary for yeah, people to get a, a full understanding of what's going on in the world. I guess they call him an aggregator or something. He's that, an aggregator, yeah. right. He doesn't write the stories, he writes the headlines. No, just post up stories from all of the spectrum. Right. Inclu and, 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 he, and by the way, Washington Post is on there, New York Times, um, uh, Huffington Post, all these liberal sites, they end up getting stories on there as well, so it's not as if it's strictly a conservative viewpoint. I will tell you that it's 
frequented by conservatives because they want to hear both sides of the story. Great headlines, but, though. Yeah, great headlines. Great headlines. <laughs> Urban Update, City of Lynn. Last week, Polly, uh, we brought up, I talked about there was an expansion, $2 million expansion in the AmeriCorps. I had no idea what it was. Yep. And that article was in the item. And you took exception uh, because the headline attached the article made no sense. Uh, the headline attached the success of this $2 million to the Congressman Seth Moulton had nothing to do with him. And, and I think what you're going to point out is in the journal, the, they had a similar story about this AmeriCorps program, mm -hmm. and it doesn't, it doesn't use it as a, a way to fawn over the congressman. It uses it as a way to, to describe the program. To some level, it. because the journal did have the congressman along with a young man, by the way, who I he met. He was there, and, right. and, and that's news that, by itself. Right. I, I get that, and, and that's, but, but I, so, all too often I see, um, you know, they get themselves in the picture so that they can be associated with a good thing, um, but then the item takes it a step further by making, actually making the statement that he wasn't just there. It, thanks to him, the money was made available, and that's not exactly Well, here was my concern. I posted that it was a $2 million federal dollar expansion of the AmeriCorps program, which is inaccurate. And for that, I apologize. It was it's an my extension mistake. of a program that had been around for many years. But the they problem is, it. is the way it was written in the paper led me to the conclusion that it was a federal program because right. they had a molten on it. Right. And we're going to get to the ferry in this section because it's the same type of situation. Now, it wasn't federal dollars unless I misunderstood the journal. The journal said that the folks that put this together, the United Way, it's a charity situation, right? What, the AmeriCorps is like the Peace Corps of the past. It, it is a charity that runs the program. They do get federal funding. Yeah, they get federal dollars? Right. But I, 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 I'm convinced of this, and I don't really, uh, I, I think I, the facts speak for themselves. The program has been around for many years, and it was extended for another three years, which basically said, you know, we're going to keep funding this program because it works. So Seth Moulton shows up there, and all of a sudden, the item has us thinking that Seth Moulton is responsible for this funding in the first place, which he is not. Let me get into the weeds with you, right. because you're an accountant by trade, and you're an executive yep. at GLIS, so you understand chart flows, manpower, assignments, and things of this nature. So it's $2 million over and above, is that correct? Am I understanding this? $2 million expanded, more than two. They have a base and they added $2 million to that base, is that what they're saying? No, the $2 million, well, if you, if you consider the base to be what they've already spent, but basically the $2 million just extends a program for three more years. So what they simply did was, then, what was it before? The alliance is to invest $2 million to improve academic outcomes of immigrants in the city of Lynn. Was it expanded to two million, or was two million added? It was. It was so. It's two million over three years. So first of all, six hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars a year. You all know, right. They make it. It sounds better when they call it two million, so they make it over three. I, years. I got that. So let's just say that in, in the the first year of this mm -hmm. new pro of this um, of this particular program, it's six hundred sixty-seven thousand. In the previous year, it was less than six sixty-seven. So. They claim that it's gone from 15 individuals to 25. Right. So it's a net gain of 10. Yep, so you could call that so, a, a two-thirds increase in the funding. But since we don't have a base figure to work with, we have no idea right. of what the per You can say that cost is. it was probably $300,000 a year last year, and now it's 667, so there wasn't So you think it doubled? Actually, no, it would probably be more like 400, 450,000. From 400 to 667. So 10 people would be $30,000 per person? I guess what yeah. I'm trying to figure out is to add the additional 10 people, was that a $300,000 per person or a $300,000 increase against last right. year? I, or, or are we talking about a Six hundred and sixty seven. So, so the fifteen people probably cost about four hundred thousand. Twenty five people is gonna cost six hundred. So it's about thirty thousand per individual. Yeah. Not counting administrative costs, right? 
Well, 30,000 all in. Right. Which is not a heck of a lot per person to do what they're doing no. in the school. In the but it's system. a lot more than uh, Gordon College doing it for Which free. Which was, you brought that point up. Right. And Gordon College gave 15,000 hours, did you tell me last no. week? A year. A year for zip. Right. Fundamentally doing the same thing. Right. Now, because, because one man has an opinion that they don't like, they shut him down. He used to be on the school committee, now he's an attorney. Or was an attorney at he that time. He wasn't the only one, but yeah. And by the way, one of our commenters, a uh, wonderful comment from one of our viewers, brought that point up on some of the Wonder Women about that they showed some bias when it came to Christian values right. on that By the way, Seth Moulton supported that position that, to shut down. The, I wonder why. Right. So, in any case, the item also did not point out in the article that the journal did effectively is that this program has now been expanded. It's not exclusively to Lynn. It's now including a couple of schools in Salem as part of that ticket. So Lynn is not the total beneficiary. And, and, and let's be clear, the reason that you need to expand the program is not because um, Seth Moulton wants to do good things for the city of Lynn. It's because the city of Lynn is taking a, a, a an unusually large share of the disproportionate, it, yeah. right, of the um, the um, non English speaking refugees into this into the school system. Well, I, I have a, I don't have a problem with their goal, their aim, a mission, or whatever you want to call it, because it's to improve academic engagement sure. and reduce it. school dropout I, rates. I'm glad they have. I, I'm glad yeah. they have the program too. You know, I think that it, it's kind of a it's an all it's a all methods that you can do so. I would say that we should bring back Gordon College for the, for the students to donate their time. We should have this program in place. And we should be looking at, is the effect of having both of those programs, if we could get them both back, enough to manage the circumstances that led to the need for it in the first place? In other words, is it enough to cover all of the refugees that we're getting in Lynn? And if it's not, we need more, right? Good point. That's what the congressman should be working at. Right. I want to offer an apology under our Wonder Women of Lynn, and we'll have more Wonder Women later. You correctly pointed out that I forgot the Ward 5 counselor. And then on top of that, I forgot uh, Lorraine Gately. So did I. Well, and our apologies to Lorraine and to uh, Diana. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, that, but by the way, that was, a, that was a, a nice thing for you to do to recognize some of the more important um, female uh, participants in what goes on in the city of Lynn. I think doing a marvelous job. Do you, know, I, you know, all this, all this junk that we're hearing about gender bias and gender glass ceilings and all the rest of it. I mean, look, I have six granddaughters, uh, and two of them are gainfully employed that graduate from college and gainfully employed in a wonderful firm in Boston. The same one, as a matter of fact, because the older granddaughter, cousin to the other, got a finder's fee <laughs> for, you know, uh, Make getting her, her right. cousin Hired, so it's a, it's a good thing. Paul, I want to go to the ferry uh, because you have an update on the ferry. Yes, no, maybe. I have no clue. Now that that's another one that was supposed to be four point five million dollars for a ferry, but right. somehow you got a. Uh, uh, some I, information I talked on this. to somebody over the weekend who's been pretty close to the action on yeah. everything related to the ferry, and he pointed out to me that um, no, there is no. It's not guaranteed that the the ferry, that there's four and a half million dollars to get a ferry. It's just like I was saying, they basically take credit for it before it happens, and then they're gonna take credit for it a number of times along the way. And this is, you know, this is how politicians su survive in a world where there's a lot of cynicism, is they, they continue to bombard the airwaves with suggestions that they're doing great things for their community. When in fact, they're really not. Um, and you know, so, you know, the, the suggestion that the governor's office shut down the ferry operation being a foolish thing because we've already paid, f we've already got a commitment to build the ferry or to, or to, to buy a ferry for a, 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 an actual ship, a boat, um, is not true. It's just not true. However, I mean, that's not to say that having the ferry in operation in the city of Lynn is not a good thing. It's just that, 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 that the statement that they made, to, in essence, to make the governor look bad, I think was, you know. So you're telling me it's politics. It was, it was. And the bottom line, it's politics. So you have the head of the Democratic 
uh, committee, Tom McGee, right, right. That's the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, probably got marching orders from Washington, D.C. You can't have this Republican governor in doing, a blue doing, state doing, doing well. So, right. So you better start. And isn't that a shame? I mean, if yeah, you think about it, I mean, I, mean I would think if we as voters in, in, in the city of Lynn or in the state of Massachusetts or in this country, um, you know, elect somebody like Charlie Baker who does such a great job. And, and by the way, I'm, it's not just me saying that. He is. He has an over seventy percent approval rating. He is the the most popular governor in the country. That's right. So, but they so can't have that. They can't have that. So, no. so they would they would rather blow up what's going on in the state of Massachusetts and have a Republican oh, succeed, oh, I, I which is a you. which is a travesty. Fifty alleged experts, foreign affairs experts, came out the other day, supposedly Republicans, to annihilate. You might, they got their talking points from the Clinton campaign, for God's right, sakes, right. to go after Donald Trump. Now, here's the irony. Those are the exact 50 people who brought us into the place that we're at today, which is not that good. Right. They're the ones that blew up the Middle East. They're right. the ones whose policies right. caused all the problems to start with. Right. And they're looking at, at Donald Trump as being a problem because he has <laughs> a little common sense. Well, you, you know, everybody kind of thinks of me as a Republican. I'm really not. I'm independent, and I, you know, yeah. I, I just have conservative views, which are typically uh, those of the Republicans. But the fact of the matter is I have j just as much um, disdain for the attitude of the establishment Republicans as I do for the establishment They're Democrats. They're no different. All they do, they, they, they preach different things. They fight about who's going to be in charge, but the bottom line is that there's this revolving door of elites in this country that take turns destroying this country. Next. Every single one of those individuals that signed that letter are Bushites, whether from the father right. or the son. Right. This is Jeb Bush getting, they're, they're doing this and it's sinful that a family supposed dynasty is about to, you know. They don't want to lose control. So let's wait a talk second, about the damage they do to the country long term is worse. Supreme so, Court and others. So from 1992 to 2000, the 12-year span, yeah. this country was run by George Bush and Bill Clinton, right? And what, by the way, they're buddy-buddy. They're, they're, they're like family. Exactly. Right, and then, and, then, and then about a year ago, a little over a year ago, all the talk was that there was going to be a Bush-Clinton rematch. And, you know, Which the, was win -win. the establishment was like, this is great, it doesn't matter the outcome. So what's happened? They have enlisted every billionaire in the country, every internationalist, globalist there is, the media, everybody and his, and his brother going after Donald Trump, who may be rough on the edges, but... Who is rough on the edges. But that's the difference between a, a, a true politician and, and a, a guy... When you who's say just, rough on the edges, we're talking about someone that doesn't passwords. Right that doesn't use politically correct language? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, In other he, words... He, he, he makes the mistake of speaking what's on his mind. <laughs> so, they can call him crazy, and that's okay, because I can't call anybody crazy and nuts, because if I do that, I'm politically right. incorrect. Right, so, so let's make it clear. The establishment, especially the left wing of the Democrat Party, has, they have one rule. You can't say anything bad about anybody unless they disagree with us. And then you can say whatever you want. Precisely. Yeah. But it's not just the left wing of the Democratic Party. Right. It's the entire establishment neocons. Right. You know, the old neocons, there's something wrong with their foreign policy. And by the way, if anybody stopped to think about it, NATO is antiquated. Right. No, I agree. But, you know, your point about the neocons and, and you know, kind of being warmongers and stuff like that. They which are. Clint, which Clinton is, right? You would, you, off air, you were talking about how, um, you know, the Arab Spring was something that the neocons supported and all that kind of stuff. And I'll take it one step further. They encouraged it because they profit from uh, destabilized regions. Paul, it's a wonderful and article. That's a sh can you imagine that? Our, uh, the, the people running this country wanted a destabilized North Africa or Middle East because it's good for business. Not only that, it was a social experiment to try to democratize Islam. There's an incompatibility there, but nobody wants to talk to it. You know, you can't have a constitution and Sharia law. They're incompatible, right? Okay? So, the DNC gets this fellow from Pakistan and his wife up there to vilify Donald Trump and he pulls out a constitution. Have you read this? 
when he has written and he holds that that Constitution that he says should be cherished is subordinate to Sharia law. Right. He's an advocate of that. Did they say that? Does no. the media point out that what how hypocritical that is? Well, can we put up those? Uh, shh, not yet, because <laughs> we're going to go to a very important part. It's called clearing the air. Now, in all fairness, I did not know, I should have, and I feel bad about it, I have to apologize, that my daughter-in-law, Jen, who is a nurse, uh, is part of this. She works for DPH. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that. And it, it's a wonderful thing, apparently, and, and by the way, somehow an organization that you're affiliated with is a beneficiary of this Prevention and Wellness Trust so Can Fund? I tell you a story about that? Yeah, absolutely. So back in 2012, 2013, um, yeah. when Steve Walsh was the state rep for Lynn, he was, he was in charge of, he, from the legislator's perspective, he was in charge of developing the new rules around um, health care reform. And Steve is, I mean, he, I mean. Something he like. Politically, passion. we don't agree on a lot of things, but this guy put his heart and soul into figuring out what changes needed to be made in the healthcare system in the state of Massachusetts so we could improve on things. And it's, you know, it's got a lot more to go and all that kind of stuff. So I met with him a couple of times and I specifically asked him at one point if he, regardless of what he was doing, if he could make sure that there was money available for prevention and wellness. And I put it just like that. And wouldn't you know it, when the bill came out, there was a $60 million trust fund created called the Wellness and Prevention Trust Fund. Back in 2012, right? 2013. 2012, right. 2013. And that trust fund is now, uh, you know, managing, um, well, there's a, the city has some funding for that. They, they got funding, and it involves the health center, GLIS, the housing authority, and a few other agencies. And if we take a look School at the picture, if the picture's up there again, uh, from left to right, it's Deb Tanza and she happens to be in the Lynn Public School Nursing Program Specialist. My daughter-in-law, Jen, who is an asthma research nurse, and which makes me feel good, because my daughter, uh, one of my daughters, has suffered with asthma all her life. And let me tell you, folks, there is nothing in the world scarier if you're a parent or a child, but if a parent, when they have a young child that's turning blue, because they breathe. can't breathe, right. and you gotta rush them to the hospital, and that is really, you know, if ever right. they can find a cure for asthma, right. I mean. Yeah, and by the way, 2,000 of the 15,000 students in the city of Lynn are asthmatic. Right. That's 13%. That's a big number, Paul. It is. Yep. You know, and they're doing wonderful work with that. Now, this it was a $6 million award right. to the and city. For three years. For three years, yep. as I understand. And there, were, and there were four domains. There was the asthmatics, and then there was smoking cessation were two areas that they were focusing on. And the areas that Gliss was involved with mostly uh, was false prevention and um, hypertension. Yeah. And we do that through what we call the Kiosk for Living Well, and if you haven't heard about our Kiosk for Living Well, you will be hearing it about it soon because it's creating quite a stir at the national level. Who is that gal? Is it O'Connor, Mary O'Connor you work Mary with? Mary Ann O'Connor, who just announced her retirement. Well, yeah. I'm sorry, she just announced that she's taking a job in Medford, so she's leaving. So you worked in coordination with her? She was the, um, the lead, uh, the city was the lead through the Department of Public Health in Lynn, and um, you know, the, the key, there were three, I would say there's three, well, two primary partners and then a, a second, some secondary partners. So the Lynn, ha Lynn Housing Authority um, played a, a key role, but probably a little bit below what the Health Center and Gliss were doing, because Health Center and Gliss were really focusing on the creating, the, the big part of this Prevention and Wellness Trust Fund was to create a integration between what we do in the community, excuse me, as community organizations and what's happening in the health center, which is like the health side. So it's creating a, a, bi a bi-directional referral system and, and the ability to communicate electronically in, in an age where uh, that hasn't been happening. See, I, I look, I, I just think- Cool stuff, really cool stuff. Well, I mean, here we have the pediatric asthma, yep. pediatric young kids and all the elderly, so this cross spectrum. Yep. Uh, and from what I understand, in the Lynn School Department and Superintendent Latham, who you threw a nice bouquet at last week, and deservedly so, is a big proponent of this program because you've seen the benefits of it. They attach, they, they create a plan, an asthma plan, with the pediatrician, which is followed up by the school nurses. 
So they monitor these kids because it is. I mean, uh, when a kid has an asthma attack, and if you have My, triggers, they yep. try to get rid of the triggers in the school. Right. Uh, and that's a great thing, I think. And I suppose the housing authority, because of uh, falls and hypertension, things you're talking about, acute illnesses. Yeah, so what the housing authority does is, so, so, so we handle the, the falls prevention. So we, we provide um, training, one-on-one -on -one training mm -hmm. and uh, group training for people so that they can, you know, do some things to prevent them from falling on their own. You know, we have the tug test and these, a number of these things. But also, it's not just about changing the behavior of an elderly. It's also, an elderly person is also about changing their environment. We call it um, person fit. So, uh, for example, we may send one of our um, uh, staff persons to somebody's house because uh, they were at a high risk of falls, and what we'll do is evaluate the house, and maybe we can put a, a railing in the bathroom or move, remove some pull rugs, and, and we do all that kind of stuff. And if there's any, um, you know, substantive work that has to be done, like to, to install a railing or something like that, the Housing Authority does that for us. So, so that's where their role comes into play here. So it's actually pretty good. So we're, we're, we're encouraging and training people to be more mindful of risk falls risk, um, and at the same time, we're trying to evaluate their home to prevent, uh, to, to, you know, set it up so that it's not, you know, a booby trap. I mean, you know. Yeah, good point. Paul, I want to ask you something. I don't know if it's true or not, but someone said, said this to me, and folks out there, I don't know if you know about it, if you would, comment on it. In the elderly, we have a tendency to think that they take a fall and break a hip. What I was told is what ac actually happens is they break the hip and then fall. Oh, I, I don't, I'm not really sure you know, about not, that. It, it makes some sense. As you get older, I, your bones get I, brittle, and the, and the consequence is it isn't a fall that breaks the bone. It's that the bone breaks, and then you fall. I never heard that. I neither uh, did I. I don't I'm know not, if it's true. I, and I don't know whether it's true or not, but what I can tell you... But it's interesting. I can tell you that 2.5 million elderly people per year fall and have a significant um, you know, break or something that puts them into the hospital and the cost of dealing with that is 30, on average is $35,000 per fall, which that's worse. every year. So what we're trying to do is, you know, cost always has to come into play. I mean, to me, it's about- no, I understand that. Because how many times have you heard the story somebody falls and they break a bone and then in a year they're dead, you know? Um, and no, but in, in an elderly person, a broken hip is devastating. Yep. I mean, right. because it, now, now all fundamentally life threatening. Right. Quality right. of life goes right down the drain. Right, exactly. So, so there's a lot of good reasons to prevent that from happening. I agree. And that's what we do. And with our relationship with the health center, we've we've impacted the lives of a lot of people. Um, people that we've never met before. People that we already knew. I mean, there's a guy, and I won't mention his name, but he comes into the senior center. And um, before we started this program, he had. Um, come in one day and his face was all scratched up and I said, Jim, what's, what happened? And he was telling me that he had tripped and fallen walking from his apartment to the senior center. And he, he basically, he fell and he kind of scraped his face on the pavement or whatever. And um, so, you know, in fact, he talked to me about it and I went over to look because he tripped over something and we found out that there was a, a sidewalk that really was in disrepair. So kind of got the city to fix it, and they did, and it was great, and all that kind of stuff. But then shortly thereafter, uh, maybe three or four months later, he fell again. And luckily, in both cases, I mean, he, he banged up his face pretty good, but he didn't, you know, otherwise injure himself, you know, no broken bones or anything. And um, then we got to put this program in place. We got him to participate in it. He comes down to the senior center regularly and gets training on how to, you know, make sure that he's picking his feet up and he's put, laying, put, going heel to toe, heel to toe, tug test and all this kind of stuff that he's doing, hasn't fallen since. And he's wearing a cane now and stuff like that. So, you know, so here's a guy that, you know, luckily didn't hurt himself too badly the two times that he did fall. And now he's uh, got some training that's preventing him from falling again. And I think it's the greatest thing in the world. We have stuff like this happen all the time. St. Paul, yeah. I keep saying we have a St. Among Us. <laughs> Let's get to <laughs> a subject that really is gnawing at a lot of people. And it's called fair and unbalanced. 
And fair, and, I've always heard it as fair and balanced. No, fair yeah, and this unbalanced. is unfair and unbalanced. Unfair and unbalanced. Yeah, you got so, it. So, so the right reverse. For, the reverse. Okay. And there's a collage of all of these. <laughs> um, this is up on the screen. Uh, yeah, and it should have the Washington Post, the New York Times, CNN, ABC, CBS, et cetera, Salon, Hollywood. And you hear me talking about this all the time, folks at home. Um, I always complain about the, the mainstream media. Um, some people like to call it the lame stream media. And, you know, frankly, um, they claim to be providing, well, what is, what's the, uh, the, uh, the um, New York Times it says right above the, right at the top of their newspaper every day. It says, all the news that's fit to print. The problem is they decide whether it's fit or not, and they're only printing what they want you to know. They leave a lot of things unsaid. You, especially said, that about the, you said that about the local paper also. Yeah. So it's not a phenomenon. It just See, no, but, it, but the problem is it, it, it has a greater impact at the national level when you know, they, they refuse to point out some things that are not all that pleasant for the Clinton people. They don't want the you know, story getting out, for example, that um, there's this uh, free video that you can get on Breitbart called Clinton Cash. You can, it's, a bi it's a biography of the, of the Clinton. Which has had the, several million hits, by the way. Yeah, so if, by the way, if, if any of you folks have a chance to get on it, go to Breitbart.com or go to, if you have uh, files, you can go to One America. Watch the Clinton Cash biography. It tells you, it's a remarkable of, of the quid pro quo that existed between her, her husband, the foundation, and the State Department, and all the people that were benefiting from Hillary's moves. Did you know it's in comic book novel form? I did see that, yeah. In fact, I will have it tomorrow, because I ordered it from, uh, from uh, right. Amazon. But all the stuff that, that you're reading about, that I'm talking about, that will be clearly understood after you watch the Clinton Cash video. Wait a, uh, minute. Wait a minute. No, I want okay. to finish this. So all those things that, that are going to come out of this yeah. are never, ever, ever listed in except these, these, uh, on these media Except things. they can't avoid what is in the news today where they got a hold of Huma Ahmedin, who I mentioned last that, week. That's not going to be in there. And Cheryl Mills, who they got from Freedom Emails. of Information where they're turning around and they show the nexus between the Clinton Foundation, the State Department, and pay and play. Right. Given, no question given people that that jobs place. and all that kind of, yeah. All right. That yeah. should be big news. Not the fact that they're reading into and divining what Bill, I mean, every time, every time Trump opens his mouth, they divine what his words mean. Although when Clinton said it depends on what the meaning of his is, nobody, nobody questioned how insane that was. Right. But, when it comes to Trump, they're always trying to divine things. Now, and that's because the establishment wants to maintain control. Oh, do they ever? Control. Or do they gang up like crazy? The Trumps, the Trumps, unhinged. Here's what they write: unfit, unhinged, unstable, unqualified, unprepared, racist, misogynist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, narcissist, phony, fraud, con, and on and on and on it goes. There is never a positive word about him. Now, here's what really gets me. Oh, and and by the way, they're all personal indictments. Exactly. They have and, nothing. and they accuse him of calling her names and doing personal attacks against her. <laughs> well, they, Can you believe right, that? Right. And all she does, and all of her surrogates, all they do is say he's unfit, great, including the 50 Bushites, right. supposedly foreign policy experts. And if they're so expert, they did a lousy job in their foreign policy. Now. They say, don't attack family or innocence or collateral damage. Let me ask you, wasn't Melania, his wife, attacked first by Cruz when they posted a nude picture of her, right? right. In the campaign, the primary. Right. And then they, they got mad at Trump because he compared his wife to Cruz's right. wife, right. you know? Now, the New York Post, a couple of weeks ago, did two. Right. And now they're questioning her immigration status and how she got a citizenship. I mean, the first time in history that a Democrat was worried about illegal immigration. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. So, Can you so, that so, one? so that's the only illegal immigration that they are worried about. That's the only one about her. So it goes further than that. Hillary Clinton starts talking about, about those terrible, terrible Trump boys. Because they happen to be big game hunters. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of hunting, but they are. Now, somehow they're terrible because they have big guns and they go big game hunting on a safari. 
you know, better than being a predator of females yeah, like her I was husband. Say, her husband was, was, was makes company with that guy. Jer uh, was it Jeffrey Epstein, who was yeah. a, who was a convicted pedophile? Yeah. And she and he's traveling to all parts the Virgin of the Islands world. and yeah. down there. Yeah, exactly. That's, well, that's, a, okay, that's okay, that, though. Yeah, that's a play on words, Virgin Island, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, and then here's the best one of all. Ivanka got up and talked about, and she influenced her father to introduce a wonderful concept in a terrific speech that he gave on Monday, economic speech, in which he is going to propose that women who put their kids in childcare can deduct it, and a few other things, and leave, you know, what, what do they call it? Uh, Family leave? Right, right. All right. So apparently some subcontract of hers that she has no idea who they are, because uh, she has a ma vast array of uh, industry to shit, does not provide that service to its employees, of which their employees are probably the owner and their daughter. But right. that's beside the point, because nobody looked into it. So they're trying to claim that Ivanka's a hypocrite because of that. But nobody tells you that Ivanka's main firm her, that she has control over, gives everybody eight weeks with full pay. That's not hypocritical. A lot of companies don't give that. Right. She's not mandated to do it. She does that. Okay? Mm -hmm. So they try to make a negative out of something right. positive. On top of it, remember I told you about, about the dress she wore? 138 bucks. 138 bucks. They're trying to make a big deal out of it because it's her line and sold at Macy's like right. she's doing false well, advertising. Well, you know, branding, they call it. You and I did some, I guess what we would call it, opposition research during the uh, con congressional race a couple of years ago, remember? And we went out to, to find out about Seth Moulton's business and all it that. It didn't kind of exist? Thing. Right. And so opposition research happens, both sides do it. But the, the despicable part to me is when they basically have something that appears to be problematic that really isn't and they just spin it to make it to make somebody look bad and you know and they and they don't care about how, whether it makes them look hypocritical for doing it they just do it anyway and that to me is a big problem and it's and it doesn't that's not just the democrats doing it it's the republicans are doing it too i just think that if we're going to you do opposition research the 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 issue should be focused on things like facts you know, not, you know, you know, like you said, they, they, take, they take a little sliver of information that gets spit out and they turn it into a big story that isn't They're all really diviners true. now. They can read, they're mind readers. They're right. going to tell you what words mean. How about the Clintons? Now, here's a famous quote. I never had sex with that woman. Oh, no, not me, Monica Lewinsky. That's a famous quote, right? Was it true? Depending on what the meaning of is is. That's a famous quote. How about this one here? At this point, what difference does it make? Familiar? Yeah. Okay. Hear anybody talk about that? How about impeachment? You ever hear that word? Any, I'll tell you. How about Mark Rich? How about Jeffrey Epstein? How about Whitewater, Travelgate, Cattle Futures, Benghazi, Clinton Foundation, Laureate University, which we're going to get into, and the fact that the Clinton's net worth, the Clinton's net worth, is somewhere between 100 to 200 million bucks. And they don't do anything for it, other, other than- They make speeches. Th they sell their public office, is what they do. It's called pay- To play. To play. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to get to Laureate University. Folks, you never heard of Laureate University, have you? So, but babe, before you go there, can yeah. I just say that everything that you listed, all of the, the things that Hillary Clinton will say are just, it's it, it's all BS, perpetrated by the the what is it the 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 the, the right wing conspiracy theorists, right? But it's all basically things that actually happened. What they told, and then the the conversation about Trump is about all these little things, all you know these personal attacks about, oh he's racist because of X, he's this because of that. Everything is, you know. It, there's no facts associated with the personal attacks. There's plenty of facts associated with all that other stuff, right? It I'll give you one. Just came out yesterday. We'll see if we hear about it. You're going to hear about it first here, folks. There's this woman, 54 years old, from Arkansas, third largest town in Arkansas. When she was 12 years old, she was brutally raped by a 41-year-old and a 15-year-old. She required 
stitches, you know, in her private areas and stuff. It, it was brutal. Do you know who defended the rapists? Hillary. You know what happened to the rapists? Got off scot-free. No? One year. One year. Yeah. Of which the two years that he, uh, two months that he was in, you know, being detained was subtracted from, so effectively 10 months. You know how that happened? No. They inadvertently, after they cut a sample from the undergarment, the, the rapist undergarment that had the semen and the blood, after they did the test to prove that that in fact was the case, they happened to discard that inadvertently. And what remained was an undergarment with no DNA evidence on it anymore because it's been cut out. She picked that up, ran to New York, and found a forensic, whatever you call them, you know, specialist expert who was testify that there wasn't any evidence on here to prove anything. She runs back down to Arkansas and threatens the prosecutor that she's got a guy willing to come down and say that this evidence will prove that or cannot ascertain that there was any right. So DNA she, evidence. So she used a technicality to get the guy off. Yeah. So she plead, pled down it. And she had given the guy a lie detector test, which, by the way, he passed. And she's heard in an interview giggling and laughing. Can you imagine he passed it? Can you imagine he passed it? I don't believe, I, I'll never trust a lie detector test, which in effect is an admission of guilt. That she knew the guy was guilty. Right. And now she's a defender of young girls. This woman has had a terrible life. Now, whether that was a contributing factor or not, I suggest it probably was. And she never wanted to tell us, sir. She's coming out. Let's see if they investigate that, sir. Let's see if they point that out. That's the point I'm trying of to make. Of course they won't. Oh, yeah, Joe. but what about, what about? So what, if you what, want to find out anything about what Joe's talking about, go to some reputable sites that are, provide a full picture of the news. You'll hear both sides of the story. It'll be fair and balanced. Go to Drudge Report. Go to uh, Breitbart. Go to these sites that are actually they're, they're, looking they're, at things that are not in the mainstream media. Well. You remember in 212 where they all bummed out of shape because allegedly uh, Mitt Romney harassed some kid at prep school? Right. Oh, that was a big deal. They went back to that. But nobody goes back to this. Nobody mentions Epstein. She's off limits. They're nobody, all off wait limits. Wait a minute. There's, there's something else. Hey, that, wait a minute. Yeah. The Democrats made it very clear. Clinton is going to be the president, and don't you say a word about it. Really? That's the deal. Really? So this is all of a sudden now... <laughs> Pravda, and as you mentioned, yep. Tas, I, 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 yep. are we not to? I'm just saying. Don't I be can't unbalanced. believe don't I'm, be I care about the whole I thing. I have a sister-in-law. Huh? I have a sister-in-law who's in, you know, who loves the idea of Hillary Clinton being president, and I just can't for the life of me. Strictly I'm just, for gender? Um, or for I, I, merit? I think, I, I think most of it's gender-based. That's sick. But, but 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 here's the thing that's troubling. The most troubling is that she's getting her information from MSNBC and CNN, and she thinks she's getting the full story. She's not. You know... If she had the full story, she would not be so quick to... Support. I haven't even mentioned Anita Broderick, who claims to have been... I haven't it's mentioned any BS. of the Bimbo eruption. Joe, None of that. Joe, nobody has ever done... The Clintons have never done anything wrong. Don't you understand that? No, but I want to get to this one. Laureate University, and the reason why I mention that is because you've all heard of Trump University, how they're trying to vilify that it was a sham, a scam, and this and that. Oh, right, yeah. All right. Laureate University paid, it's an international university, by the way. I think it was headquartered in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, but it also was, came out of the Middle East, maybe Saudi Arabia, for all I know. Uh, but anyways, who got $16.5 million to be a consultant? For Laureate University? I don't know. Who? Bill Clinton. Really? Hmm. When? Over the last four or five years. So during part of the time where Hillary Clinton was a Secretary of State? Yeah. And now while she's potentially the next that president of the United that particular States. That particular university had to go to the State Department to get waivers. And, and that particular university is now uh, being looked at for gross improprieties. Okay? But is but that going to come up? No, of course not. All right. So, folks, look up Laureate University. L-A-U-E-R-A-T-E, University. 
Make up your own mind. Read about it. That's all I'm saying. So, look, I'm not going to defend Trump University. I know nothing about it. I'm not going to defend whether, in fact, their practices were good, bad, or indifferent, okay? A large university, I know that their practices were not that good. The point is, be fair and balanced about it, right. not unfair and unbalanced. Regular universities, by the way, they go on fishing expeditions. They, they, they get bodies in there that they never intend to pass. They grab their money. Right. And well, and so just, just so we could talk about, you know, the Clinton angle on all of this. First of all, so um, what does it suggest to me that um, Clinton got $16.5 million from, from this Laureate University yeah. is that if you want to do business with the, with the Secretary of State before or the President maybe to be, um, it's a, there's, a, there's a protocol. You have to grease the skids, as they say. And I'm going to tell you that there are two kinds of politicians in this world, and there's the ones who do whatever they can for, to, to, to wet their own beak, as a friend of mine once said. Um, and if the, the federal government or, or the, the country or the state or the city or town benefits from it, that's a bonus. But that's not why they do anything. And I would put the Clintons squarely in that camp. They are the type that are in this for them and they pretend to be out there to try to help, you know, the, the kids and all that kind of, it's all BS designed specifically to ad advance their own agenda and, by the way, is fully protected by the media who doesn't report any of this impropriety. I'll give you a better example. The 50, the dastardly 50, I'll call yeah. them the dastardly 50, right? These are the 50 Republican neocons who are anti-Trump, right? Alleged, yeah foreign policy experts, that one of the rationales for going against him is because they feel he's cozying up to Russia, he's got ties with Russia. That's so, hold so it, Paul. crazy. Hold it. And even if he was, uh, wait a minute. I don't think that's a big Wait deal. a minute, wait a minute. Let's go down the factual road. He's been trying to get hotels in Russia. It's been unsuccessful. So his ties with Russia are not that great. Okay, number one. But who has significant ties to Russia? Hillary Clinton. Yeah. In fact, she... No, negotiated in the Clinton Foundation a 20% transfer of our uranium stockpile to Russia. And you have these foreign policy experts who have the gall to say that Trump is cozy right. with see, Putin see, and with Russia see, here's when the, she's the one who has deals with him. She's the one that did the reset button. That, yeah, right, right she, wrong. She's looking at it from how can she benefit either her or her staff or, 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 her, pe or her people, um, and that's the only thing that she operates on. In Trump's case, I think, you know, look, I, I, was, I was a big Reagan guy and I supported everything he did and, you know, his efforts to, you know, crush this, the Soviet Union was great and all that kind of stuff. But the fact of the matter is, what country is more like the United States in terms of a nationalist that, that wants to be, uh, like Trump, wants to have a nationalistic approach as opposed to a globalist approach. And I would say that Russia could actually be an ally to the United States at some point because they think, uh, they're thinking nationalistic. Oh, Paul, you're going to have the entire, oh my God, the entire foreign expert community is going to come after you with knives, guns, and cannons on that one. Your sainthood is gone. You are now the mark of the double, but, but, triple but, six. But look, and, and I'm not, and I'm not, for a moment thinking that it's that uh, Putin is a good guy or anything like that. He's a he's a he's a, a guy. You have to be careful. Sometimes it's better to keep your friend, you know, you keep your friends close and your enemies closer, as they say. I guess I just think that you know, in an era where you, your alliances change and allegiances change. You know, you, you, your allegiances are with people who agree with you, right? How much illegal immigration is going on in Russia? And I don't think there's any, is there? No kidding. And not China. But and it's by the going way, on in all the European countries, and we, and, and, you know, <coughs> if, if we're successful in maintaining our in, uh, sovereignty, and that would be if 
You if, just mentioned a terrible word, what, Paul. sovereignty? Oh, yeah. Please, sovereignty? Oh, that's an antiquated notion, but, but Paul. In, in maintaining you, know, you have no right to private property. That's sovereignty, isn't it? Right to your own existence. Right now, it's time for us to honor those folks who, you know, send comments to us. So, pick it up, Paul. Uh, nice show. Thank you very much. Uh, last week, I think there was a little cognitive dis dissonance. Yeah, and the first, making those females wonder women. And then Paul, so rightly so, taking on the talking, uh, take, uh, talking about taking the rights of Christians away in the school system. Do you recall that? You I know do, actually. We talked about that's the Gordon Collins yeah. story. And so your response to that is? Well, he, you know, he's, he's making a comment that um, two of those women voted yes about moving it. You know, it I think he's got a great point. He says we should, do a, we should do a topic on that. And because of the Vox Populi, which is the voice of the people of City of Lynn, how they felt about it. You talked about that again today on the 15,000 hours that we were getting from Garden College and the school right. system. Yep. So we'll, we'll get to that and read it over and right. promise See, you that. I, you know, you can talk about the, as he points out here, or she, uh, Christian bigotry and all that kind of stuff. I'm not here to say that it was the right decision or the wrong decision, but when you kick Gordon College out, A, mm -hmm. and then B, praise a congressman who supported kicking them out for providing funding to replace those, that free labor, when he didn't actually replace it, to me is a huge problem. I mean, that's, that's where I, I, I really come. Garden College did not come in here and try to convert anybody to their perspective. No, they didn't. All right, so what, leave it alone. I mean, I, I, whatever beliefs you have privately, if I privately hold that a certain thing, for example, I happen to be pro-traditional marriage. Now, am I homophobic because of that? I wouldn't say so. I know. So we have about a minute. Uh, I like, and, and thank you once again, uh, they're waiting for the call-in, by the way, one of the comments, and, and trust me, folks, nobody wants to do call-in more than Paul and I. Yeah, and as soon as we can find a facility, you have to stay at home. Okay, stay tuned, and have a great week, actually, yeah. right? You too, Joe.